subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. The big story is still the farm protests and the big overhang on my mind is some very interesting controversies because you know what there is something that I've said in every newsroom that I have run for the past many decades. I have said that our main job in a newsroom is to never switch off the bullshit detector in our heads. So that always remains on and I'm and that detector has been going like beep 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 for the past several days. Now one of the things that you see uh, that the BJP is right now doing they are use, using an old walk the talk interview of mine with Sharad Pawar recorded in his home in Baramati. Baramati he is so popular that I have seen his portraits, his framed portraits in barber shops along with those of their gods and goddesses. So he is the god of Baramati and he has brought in a kind of green revolution there that would be the envy of any part of the country because that is not an area which is well endowed in water resources like say Punjab is. He's done a brilliant job. Now in that interview he says and he was in 2005 agriculture minister of India. He says that among the things that need to be done is some either abrogation, repeal or massive reform of Agriculture Produce Market, Market, Marketing Committee Act, APMC. And he mentions some states that have done it and he says it's a matter of time, months when more states will do it. Now that is being used by the BJP, frankly quite correctly because when public figures speak, first of all public speakers, figures can always go back uh, on what they said. We, we saw this happen say with the nuclear deal, when the nuclear deal happened, the BJP said this is like Emperor Jahangir invited the East India Company to do business in India. Sushma Swaraj said that. Uh, and then when BJP came to power, they fully implemented it. Similarly, uh, FDI in multi-brand retail, the BJP opposed it, a vote of confidence was held for this also as over the nuclear deal. But you can see now that over the past six years in chota, 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 chota ways, BJP is trying to now soften and allow the entry of FDI into retail. They still say single brand and all that, but you see now e-commerce is coming, so, uh, so all that doesn't matter. So you take a position that suits you depending on whether you're in power, you're out of power. Congress party, for example, always attacked the BJP for privatization and privatization of the airports as well. But when Congress party came to power in 2004, what did they do? They picked up the baton and they carried on with the privatization of Delhi and Mumbai airport. So you have fine airports. So hypocrisy in politics is not something that you judge politicians for. You just have to keep on reminding them, you said this earlier, you are saying this now, this is hypocrisy. So you basically hold up the mirror to the political, political class. It's fun. But it doesn't make me angry or doesn't make me outraged because that is what politics is all about. See the way both the left and the right attacked Manmohan Singh's UPA over two terms over his idea of special economic zones. It was seen to be a, some kind of new colonization. And yet when the infrastructure corridors, industrial corridors were planned, some of the th same things are being planned now along uh, Delhi Mumbai infrastructure, industrial corridor, etc., etc. And now we are all looking at China with envy. See, the Chinese got such great growth and manufacturing because they set up the SEZ. But in India, our view on SEZ would depend on who's setting it up. So when Congress was doing it, that both the left and the right, that is the left parties, Congress's own left, left intellectuals, and the BJP, Swadeshis, everybody attacked the idea. Now, don't be surprised if that idea is, it is being repackaged and it is being rolled out. What else are these new uh, corridors being set up in Uttar Pradesh, etc. So hypocrisy is part of life in politics. Now, a few things specifically have been said by politicians, which I think need their BS to be called out. One is that this APMC Act abolition law is bad. They say they want all three laws, new 
farm reform laws to be withdrawn. Now, what is wrong with these? I will tell you. India at this point has only 29 states and see what's happened there. How many states do you think have their APMC Act intact as it used to be in the past? Only 12 out of 29. 17 have either abolished it or made substantive changes to it. Some have made substantive changes to the extent of allowing things agricultural produce other than grain from being traded in private mandis. Now, I will read you a list of the states which have heavily amended or abrogated, repealed their APMC Act. So, hold your breath. I am generally going alphabetically, but I will miss one alphabet and I will come back to it. Andhra, Gujarat, Himachal Pradesh, Karnataka, Rajasthan, Goa, Madhya Pradesh, Telangana, Chhattisgarh, Mizoram, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, that's a lot of India, no? Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Telangana, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Andhra, Gujarat, Karnataka, that's a lot of agricultural India. So, Telangana, then Chhattisgarh, the new state I mentioned, uh, Maharashtra, UP, Mizoram, uh, then there is Uttarakhand, Jharkhand, Nagaland, Haryana, Chandigarh, the Union Territory, and there is one that I missed out of the alphabetical order. Which one is that? That is Punjab. So, Punjab has already substantively amended its APMC Act. So, many states, different states also allow their farmers to directly market their produce in these private mandis. And they have different names. There are some uh, that I find easy to pronounce. Uh, Raithu Bazar, APN Telangana, one I struggle with, that is Tamil Nadu, Udavar, Sandhya. Then there is Raithu Santha, which is in Karnataka. There is Apni Mandi in Punjab. And there is Krushak Bazar in Odisha. And I am sure other states also have similar arrangements. So, these are farmers already being allowed to sell their produce directly in the mandi. So, once again you wonder what is this whole problem is about. Then the other thing I see is that see this APMC abolition doesn't work and this agricultural reform doesn't work because Bihar did this in 2006 and what a disaster it's been for Bihar. Now, I know that it's easy to beat up on Bihar. Everybody beats up on Bihar and even if I said 20 rude things and said Bihar's economy is down, social indicators are down, this is down, that is down, politics is all caste, chances are 90 percent, I am just saying 90 percent because maybe many from Bihar would question me, but generally people will accept that to be the truth. But look at the situation in Bihar. Now Bihar might have abolished the APMC Act and Bihar also brought in many other reforms in its agriculture. But look at Bihar's growth rate. Now, between 2011 and 2018-19, compare Bihar with the rest of India. In those years, the entire country has had a growth rate of 7.5%, whereas Bihar had a growth rate of 13.3%. That is almost twice as high as the rest of the countries. And Bihar is India's state which has the largest percentage of people involved in agriculture among the bigger states of India. Almost 70 to 80 percent people of Bihar are involved in, involved in agriculture, much above the national average and much above the average, say, in other green revolution states. And yet Bihar's economy has boomed at a rate almost twice as high as the rest of the countries after agricultural reforms. Now, it so happens that agricultural reforms in Bihar in 2006 pretty much coincided with the rise of Nitish Kumar. So, Nitish Kumar became chief minister in late 2005. There were two elections in 2005. First was inconclusive. Second, he got a majority and that's when he began to bring in changes. So, we get some of this data from Arvind Virmani, former chief economist of Government of India. Uh, Arvind, Arvind Virmani is paper, Bihar growth, learning from experience. So, this data is available there. Now, look at some other data as well. See what happened to 
Bihar and all of India at different stages. So 1993-94 to 2000-2005. This is before the reforms in Bihar. All India growth average was 6.8%. Bihar was trailing it at 5.3%. So Bihar was growing. Bihar already had a very low base. It was growing at a rate lower than the rest of the country. So the gap between Bihar and the rest of the country was increasing further. Then what happened? See, 2004-05 to 2011-12. These are essentially Nitish years and the years also of agricultural reform in Bihar. India's growth rate, <coughs> India had a high growth period. India's growth rate between 2004-05 and 2011-12 is 8.3% average. Bihar's is 11.7%. So now Bihar has left India behind and while Bihar's base is low, Bihar instead of letting the rest of India leaving it further behind is actually closing the gap. Now if you take 2005-06 as the dividing year, that is when Nitish comes in and also brings in his agricultural reforms and his abolition of the APMC Act. Then look at the comparisons yet again 1993 to 94 to 2005 2006 Bihar's own growth rate is as we mentioned to you 5.3 then it goes up to 13.5 agricultural growth from 2005 6 to 2014 15 all of India has had an agricultural growth of 3.6% 3.6%. 4% agricultural growth is very high. In my book, Sharad Pawar has been among the two best agriculture ministers of India. Sharad Pawar now and much before that in the 60s, C. Subramaniam, in whose time the Green Revolution started. Uh, these two are the best. So in Sharad Pawar's 10 years, you got nearly 4% of agricultural growth, which is a lot. No large economy, no large country. Uh, consistently has agricultural growth above 4%. So, in those, in those years, 2005 6 to 2014 15, India's agricultural growth was 3.6. That was a Sharad Pawar high point. But what was Bihar? It was 4.7%. It was substantially higher than the rest of India's. Last five years, unfortunately, Narendra Modi's five years have not been good for agricultural growth in India for many reasons that we can go into at some other point of time. Last five years, all India agricultural growth has been 2, 2. We should be ashamed. 2%. It's half of what it was in UPA than Sharad Pawar's time. Uh, what is it in Bihar in these five years? It's been 7% in Bihar. So for heaven's sake, stop saying that Bihar's agriculture is in a shambles because Bihar reformed its economy. Bihar actually is an example of the contrary. That agriculture does well when you carry out reform. So once again, just because somebody tweets, don't run with that tweet or just, just be, because somebody in your staff put, puts a piece of paper under your nose, don't just follow it. And I'm surprised that people who should know better, even Rahul Gandhi tweeted that APMC Act abolition ke baad mein, Bihar has had a disaster in its agriculture and I know where it's coming from. It's coming from saying that people are not, not getting MSP for wheat and rice. That's a different story altogether. But Bihar today is the fourth largest producer of vegetables in India, eighth largest producer of fruits in India and Bihar is among the most heavily populated regions of India. Just for comparisons, Punjab's population density per square kilometer is 551. Haryana's is 573. These are the two green revolution states with lots of empty land to cultivate. Bihar's is exactly double, 1102. So 551 to 1102, it's exactly double. In spite of that, Bihar is making these strides in agriculture. Now, again, if you see Bihar's economy, what's happened is that because agriculture has grown, Bihar doesn't have much industry, agriculture has grown, other services and areas have grown, for example, construction has grown. If you see my writing from the wall series from Bihar, election after election, the first one in 2005, we found nothing on the wall, except 
some little things here and there saying send your child to my english medium school so there was you could see there was a yearning for learning next election we saw something else come up we saw some stuff being sold on the walls and a few pakka houses after that you will find one article writing to the wall article in that series talking about how it looked like people in bihar had some surpluses now and they were investing in their quality of life and what is the metaphor we used metaphor we used was that now anywhere you looked on the walls there were advertisements for branded underwear so if a poor state where people had no shoes no footwear in fact we also noticed in those writings on the wall that by the time the second election came at bihar's election rallies where 80% people used to be barefooted now everybody had some kind of footwear on it's a big change in a state like that now we found that all over these walls branded underwear all of underwear all those rupa and the stuff uh, i forget those brand names so that meant that people had a little more money so they were now willing to invest in better quality life and after that we noticed that what we read on the walls in bihar was sarya that is steel rods iron rods cement which means construction material and you saw that construction boom in bihar that's why bihar's construction growth rate is 29% because a state which had either no homes or thatched huts or no pakka homes started constructing big time pakka homes because its incomes went up it its incomes did not decline so stop beating up on the biharis just because it's a just because it's an easy one and, it, and it's a stereotype look at punjab in the same period now you might say that bihar's base is low bihar's per capita income today is about about 46 47000 uh, rupees whereas punjab's is about four times as much that's true or in dollar terms bihar is about 650 dollars punjab is 2300 that's about four times little less than four times but if you leave the base side see the growth rate look at the state gdp growth punjab gdp growth has been trailing india's for the past many many years since 2003 13 14 it used to be the richest state in india it's been trailing india's gdp growth only the last year that is when all of india's economy had slowed down we keep telling you that india's economy had been slow, slowing down for eight quarters before the pandemic came it was the first time in almost a decade now that punjab's gdp growth rate was going had had gone higher above the indian average india was at 5% punjab it was at 5.3 it's not as if punjab had gone up punjab was still in decline but india has declined more than punjab but otherwise in every year in so many years trailing Punjab has been way behind India in fact even in the years when India got to 9% 9 and 1/2% growth Punjab never touched 7% so these are hard facts that we have to tell our friends in Punjab as well now look at Punjab's agriculture specifically and again look at the periods it's very important green revolution came in about 9 it started in about 1969 by 71 72 it was quite matured and it carried on so between 1972 and 1985 86 that is 15 years in those 15 years in india agricultural growth rate was 2.3% what was it in punjab 5.7% and brilliant isn't it two and a half times india's because that was the boom of the green revolution but then boom that lived itself out so between 86 87 and 2004 5 that is the next epoch all india agricultural growth was 2.94% because the rest of the country also learned a few of the tricks of green revolution punjab said declined to 3% and since then punjab has been declining further if you look at the following epoch 2005 6 to 2014 15 all india agricultural growth has been 3.5% quite healthy for the size of india's economy what punjab's been 1.61 less than half of all of india so what used to be two and a half times india's growth rate has now become 
less than half of India's growth rate. And that is where this anger is coming from. Where do I get this data? I get this data from an ICREA paper uh, written by Professor Ashok Gulati, Ranjana Roy, and Siraj Hussain Saab. Siraj Hussain is a former agriculture secretary of Government of India. So this data is authentic. So Punjab's, the seeds of Punjab's decline lie in what's happened with farming in Punjab. That's getting caught in the paddy wheat monoculture cycle. You cannot, you please do not use the example of Bihar to say Bihar has done badly because Bihar has done actually brilliantly and it is Punjab, even Haryana to that, to that extent, although it's done better than Punjab, but all the farmer caught in this paddy wheat cycle are the ones who've declined. Now look at some other data. When you look at agricultural growth, and these are, it's very important to see this data. See how have India states done? Because we think green revolution, we think Punjab, Haryana, Mere Desh Ki Dharti Sona Ugle, Ugle Hire Moti. Even that film, uh, Upkar, was shot uh, in Haryana, in a, uh, not far from Delhi, on the, on the highway to Panipat from Delhi. That's where Manoj Kumar sings those songs, because that was the cradle of green revolution. But green revolution has now moved on. So look at the, between 2005, 6 and 14, 15, India's boom agriculture years, post green revolution, see the various states record of agricultural growth. So Madhya Pradesh is 9.67%, the tops. Remember we told you the other day that last year Madhya Pradesh procured more wheat than Punjab. It had beaten Haryana already a couple of years earlier. So Madhya Pradesh 9.67%, that's almost three times the national average. Jharkhand, who had thought of Jharkhand growing, 8.59%. Chhattisgarh, these states have really benefited uh, from becoming independent states. Uh, and that tells you small states work. Chhattisgarh, 6.61%. These are largely agricultural states. They have, the, they have minerals, but their people are involved mostly in agriculture. Chhattisgarh, 6.61%. Gujarat, 6.3%. Rajasthan 5.4%, Karnataka 5.17%, Andhra Pradesh 4.8%, Bihar 4.65%. We, we told you Bihar is substantively ahead of the national average. Right now I am counting the states where agriculture grew faster than our national average. Tamil Nadu 4.45%. Maharashtra 4.06, all these are above the national average. Then you come to All India which is 3.5, then Haryana, Haryana is just below 3.5, so just around the national average, not good enough for a green revolution state. Uttar Pradesh 3.2, again not too bad given that Uttar Pradesh has, hasn't had the most developed agriculture for the past many, many decades and missed out, barring Western UP, missed out the Green Revolution. Assam, Assam, 3.17%. Himachal Pradesh, 2.97%. Again, in the national average ballpark. But what is the one state that's pulling down the national average heavily? Think, it's Punjab, it's 1.61%. Then there are JNK and Kerala, and Kerala, I don't know what is the reason, but Kerala is the only state in this phase which shows negative agricultural growth of 0.97%. But Kerala have, may, may have its own reasons that I don't understand. So let me not talk about what I don't know. We'll study Kerala later. So this tells you that Punjab has a problem. And Punjab has a problem for which it has to look within. It should not look at Bihar. Because when Punjab looks at Bihar, they see Bihar as a labor exporting state. Where they come they come and work in our field. So all, a lot of the people who are now sitting on these protests, they don't have to worry about what's happening at their farms because they have laborers from Bihar and Uttar Pradesh who are coming and doing the work for them. So there is an impression that poor states and they are poor states. Their per capita income is a, almost a fourth of yours. But now they are bridging the gap much faster and they are doing much better than you. So don't let it become hare and the tortoise, or at least in, the, in that race, you don't be the hare that will lose. So once again, before I close, I will tell you some GDP figures. And there is a set of trick figures that I will hide for a moment. Because right now we are talking about Bihar and Punjab. And Bihar is our sort of touchstone. Punjab 
if you start with 2005-06, Punjab had a growth rate of 5.9%, healthy, lower than the national average, but healthy. Bihar had 0.9%, hardly growing, stagnant. Next year, 2006-07, Punjab grew at 10.1%. But Bihar grew from 0.9% to 17.7%. That is when Nitish Kumar comes in and brings about the changes. So once again, stop uh, piling on to Bihar and Biharis. They've actually done a brilliant job from a very low base, I know. But they've done a fantastic job. So in 2005-06, Punjab is 5.9%. GDP growth, Bihar is 0.9%. 2006-07 Punjab is 10.1. It's a big boom growth here. Bihar is 17.7. Next year Punjab is 9%. Bihar is 7.6%. Obviously because the base has suddenly gone up. But again the next year Punjab is back to 5.8%. It is sort of default rate of growth. Bihar is more than twice as much. That is 14.5%. So Bihar continues a double digit average. 2009-10, Punjab is 6.6, .6, Bihar is 10.4. Once again, please look at the facts before you start cursing some other state as losers. 2010-11, Punjab is 7%, Bihar is 14.7%. That is more than twice as fast as Punjab. And the following year, Punjab is 5.7. I told you 5.7, that is about Punjab's default growth rate and Bihar is 13.1%, again more than twice as high as Punjab. So respect all the states of India and this is despite the fact that this is a very crowded state which exports a lot of labor to you. Uh, don't judge them just because they export a lot of labor to you. Its people are very hard working, they don't have that much land, there is a history of underdevelopment. They don't have a, they never benefited from the green revolution. Punjab did, Punjabis were entrepreneur. They, they embraced the green revolution and that's why it might be better if they embrace the new resolution, new revolution as well. And I told you, I will hold back one set of figures for you, from you. Now this is the figures for Haryana. We told you Punjab versus Bihar. Now Haryana was carved out of Punjab in 1966, November 1966. And it was the driest, the most backward region of Punjab. See how Haryana has done. So again, the same GDP growth rates beginning with 2005-06 Punjab 5.9, Haryana 9.2. Then next year Punjab 10.1, Haryana 11.2. Punjab 9, Haryana 8.4. 7.8 is the only time when Haryana is marginally lower. But then Punjab is back. 5.8, Haryana is 8.2, Punjab is 6.6, .6, Haryana is 11, Punjab is 7 next year, Haryana is 9.5, and Punjab is back to 5.7, Haryana is 8.1. Now I know people will turn around and Haryana has now become the richest large state in India, that is keeping out Goa. Uh, so I know people will say, but Haryana has Gurgaon, but what stopped Punjab also from developing industrial, modern, industrial, IT type of structures. It did develop some cities, little new townships like say Mohali outside Chandigarh. But what is it? It is just mostly a residential slum. It is not an engine of industrial and economic development like say Gurgaon is. So people of Punjab have to ask their own leaders in terms of what they have done wrong. And they have to also think about what kind of politics have they allowed to take root in their state. And it's quite evident now that farming, as it's being done in Punjab now, there is data elsewhere. I can't share all that because it will take too long. This has been a bit long already. If you look at all the other data, you can see in Punjab, the land under lentils, oil seeds, cotton, everything has collapsed. Everybody has moved to wheat and paddy. That's why we say this is a vicious cycle of monoculture between wheat and paddy. While states, other states say Maharashtra, Andhra, Karnataka, they are moving on with vegetables, fruits, value-added stuff.